in this edition of the TV News.TV. There's going to be a whole new look to ABC Daytime. Cable TV viewers versus the cable TV operators in our exclusive Judge and Jury, plus the Sports TV News. Stand by for the TV News. This is the TV News.TV, brought to you by American Ingenuity Media, simply the solution for innovative on-air promotion, video marketing, plus internet and social marketing. Visit them at AmericanIngenuityTV.com and on Facebook. Here now is Jeff Grimshaw. Welcome to the TV News.TV. I'm Jeff Grimshaw. It's Friday, April 13th, and here now is the lead. A tectonic shift at ABC Daytime. Renewed General Hospital. To many, a surprise. Canceled the revolution. To many, another big surprise. And let's pause now so soap fans can comment. <laughs> yeah, okay. And this summer, with the revolution gone, ABC will be filling the vacant hour with a special bonus edition of Good Morning America. Hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't that be Good Afternoon America? Well, anyway, GAA will go away when K -K -K Katie debuts on ABC Daytime in September. Okay. In this corner, cable TV viewers. And in this corner, cable TV operators. All right, fellas, shake hands, come out fighting. Why? TVLegalNews.com's Gwendolyn Lindsay Jackson has the answer in our exclusive Judge and Jury. Over the years, one topic that I noticed that always extremely garners passion is the question of whether it's better to have cable TV bundling or a la carte choices. Well, since people in general hate paying for a bunch of channels that they don't actually want, just to get the four or five that they really do want, a group of consumers filed a federal class action lawsuit that took on virtually every major company in the business. Now that included NBC, Universal, Viacom, Disney, Fox, Time Warner, Comcast, and DirecTV. These consumers said that the companies exploited them by only selling programming and packages that forced them to pay for services they do not want in order to receive those must-have huge broadcasting channels that they do want. They also claim that the bundling itself is anti-competitive, which is a violation of antitrust laws. However, recently, a United States Ninth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals recently rejected the notion that bundling was indeed an antitrust issue. The court pointed out that the tying arrangements are only illegal if two key things are present, clear anti-competitive behavior and consumer harm. But these things were missing in the complaint because it did not allege that the programmers practice of selling the must-have and low-demand channels and packages excludes other sellers of those low-demand channels from the market. In fact, nothing in the complaint indicated that the arrangement between the programmers and the distributors forces those distributors or the consumers to forego the purchase of alternative low demand channels. In the end, as a consumer, don't expect that you'll have a choice to pick to pay for specific channels that you may want to watch. Well, time now for our regular Friday feature, the Sports TV News. And here now is Eric Mackerlin. Thanks, Jeff. Question on my mind this week, which NFL team should HBO feature in next season's edition of Hard Knocks, its football reality series? The cable network is trying its level best, but can't seem to get a team to cooperate. HBO desperately wanted the New York Jets to participate. After all, they now feature the most popular player in pro football, Tim Tebow. But head coach Rex Ryan apparently wanted no part of the show especially after the distractions it caused when the team was profiled before the 2010 NFL season. HBO was also interested in another one of the NFL's big off-season stories. They wanted to go to Denver to profile Peyton Manning's return to professional football. But they took a pass, and I'm not surprised. I could never imagine a perfectionist like Manning ever agreeing to something like that. Now, ESPN is reporting that the Atlanta Falcons are considering an offer from HBO. But there's no guarantee that they'll say yes. 
Now, why are teams avoiding the show like the plague? Maybe because getting to the Super Bowl is tough enough without cameras floating around your training complex 24-7. Since the series debuted in 2001, the overall record of teams that appeared on the program is a combined 52-49. and 49. Only three of the six teams profiled made the playoffs. 2010 Jets got the closest to the Super Bowl, losing in the AFC Championship game to the Pittsburgh Steelers. When you look at it that way, you can understand why teams would take a pass, and the return on the investment of participating in hard knocks just might not be worth the trouble. Prepare to qualify. Hey, your time is running out this week for you to win one of these vaunted the TVnews.tv mugs. So act fast. Simply like the TVnews.tv on Facebook, look for our daily phrase that pays on our Facebook fan site, and then email it to register at the TVnews.tv, and you are in it to win it. Now Monday, Gabriel Reyes returns with our exclusive Hispanic media report. And we want your group to sponsor the TV news so you can get your message out to the decision makers in the TV industry. Get started by emailing us at advertise at the TV news.tv. And that about does it for this edition of the TV News. I'm Jeff Grimshaw. We thank you for watching. And as always, go out and make it a good day. Specially formulated to meet your specific needs, the Monavi elements are revolutionizing how you approach your health. Built on the Monavi Bioessence Promise, each of these health pack supplements works with your body to promote your best self. Monavi, a more meaningful life.